Hi, Boris. Okay, so we've already got, uh, you know, some viewers. That's amazing. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us this Friday evening. We have something really uh, fun and interesting for you in store. Um, so, uh, you know, all those of you who've already been sort of following us on Maple Assist, we try to get you, uh, you know, the sort of relevant content that is, uh, you know, to do with studying in Canada, which, uh, you know, would help students, uh, especially in this scenario right now. And connecting to that, we have someone very special uh, with us here. There's Boris Remis is here to uh, speak to all of you and give you some very, uh, you know, sort of crucial tips on how you can keep yourself engaged uh, during this time waiting um, sort of, you know, for your semesters to start or waiting to hear back from institutions about your programs. So, uh, you know, so let's, let's, let me quickly give you uh, uh, an introduction to Boris. Uh, he, his is a very inspiring story. He actually, uh, uh, you know, went to, he's an international student himself, uh, number one, uh, which would, you know, really strike a chord for all of you international students out there or prospective students who want to study in Canada. Um, so um, Boris is from Kazakhstan and he uh, moved to Canada at the age of 16 to pursue an undergraduate degree at uh, British Columbia, University of British Columbia. And soon after he did an MBA at the, at the really prestigious school of, uh, Schulich School of Business. And, uh, and now like, you know, uh, jump to the present and Boris is an award-winning author. Uh, he, uh, he's also a, a, an education marketer and, uh, and speaker on uh, these things for international students. And it's, uh, we are so privileged to have you, uh, Boris. And uh, could you, you know, start with, you know, uh, talking about your experience as an international student? And um, thank you, and thank you, and thank you, Maple Assist, for hosting me uh, today. Hi, everyone. I see we have 27 people who are with us live. So, you know, press thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm super excited to be sharing the, the knowledge I have and the wisdom I have. Um, my story has started um, over 16 years ago when I came to Canada on a one way ticket uh, from Kazakhstan, out of all places. Uh, that, that surely has been um, a journey for me. I'm no longer an international student. I'm a proud Canadian. should pull my yeah. Canadian passport now. So it took me uh, about 10 years or so to go from a, a study permit holder to, uh, to, 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 you know, to extending my study permit, then going to postgraduate work permit, then applying for immigration through the provincial nominee program and then becoming a permanent resident and now and now a citizen. Um, hmm. and, and, you know, I'm also very proud because I have a son uh, who, is a, who is a born Canadian. So it's, it's a fascinating Amazing. journey from a, yeah. an international student to, uh, to, to being a Canadian. Um, I was always motivated to come and, 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 and integrate into the new environment. I've, I love traveling and integrating mm -hmm. into an, a new environment through education is one of the best ways to do that. Uh, because education transforms your lives. And I think I'm very grateful for Canada and Canadian uh, people and Canadian educational system that really allowed me to, uh, to, to, to realize my full potential where I never felt like an immigrant here, to be honest. I've always felt that I, I, through education, I'm able to acquire those uh, particular cultural elements. Uh, mm -hmm. that makes you Canadian. You know, you can be born Canadian like my son and spend yeah. your entire life here, but you can become Canadian through education and through many other things uh, mm -hmm. that I will be sharing. So it's great to be live uh, and uh, uh, we hopefully will have some time at the end to answer some of your burning questions because I know it's super, uh, you're super anxious about going, uh, going and studying abroad. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, uh, yes, 
everything you've said is it just sounds so interesting and you are actually a success story right for all international students something for them to sort of aspire to and uh, i can see that obviously now you have been uh, sorting uh, sort of giving advice to students for a, a long time now not only when you were sort of employed uh, with say shulik uh, but now on your own and your independent capacity you've started doing that so is this what sort of inspired you to uh, you know write write your book Great, thank you for touching on this. Over the years, uh, I've traveled to over 60 countries recruiting international students from all over the world for mm -hmm. summer programs, high school, uh, university, um, undergraduate and graduate programs. And many people have asked me for advice saying, hey Boris, you know, you went through this journey, you, you're a success story, you are, you are a poster child to some extent that many mm. students can aspire to uh, to be uh, can you give me an advice about uh, applying to the right school uh, you know getting a job getting a part-time job getting a full-time job and i gladly mentored students and their parents and mm -hmm. also other people in the educational industry who are looking to recruit the best and the brightest students yeah. um, but ultimately i realized that it is really my life mission my responsibility is to put everything i know as much as I know, right, in, in, a, in, a, in a one concise document, you know, let's mm -hmm. call it a guide. And so uh, I invested months and months to write this book, uh, which, uh, uh, which really describes the life journey from why studying abroad is important, how to pick the right school, how to apply to school, how to, how to, to get scholarship, how to plan your finances, how to be successful within your first term, how to yeah. get a job, and really ultimately how to become a, a great member of a Canadian society. So I'll put it all in the book so, so, you know, so you, not everybody can benefit from you know, seeing me live and talking to me. Yeah. Uh, and neither I have the time to do it all the time. So if, if, if somebody's eager to get the wisdom of 10 years or 16 years of, of uh, living, working and studying in Canada, then you can pick up a book and, and, and get the best knowledge uh, for yourself. No, that, that's amazing. So uh, we will touch upon your book again uh, near the end and, you know, show students how they can also sort of, uh, you know, benefit from it. Uh, but getting back to uh, what we are doing this life for. So, uh, you know, for all the students who are and prospective students who are joining us now, uh, you know, uh, obviously, as I, I as I already said, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the air right now uh, with the COVID situation. They're waiting to hear back from institutions. They don't know uh, when their intakes are going to begin or uh, what sort of mode their programs are going to be. But, uh, you know, in, in the middle of all this restriction, how can they better reach out uh, to uh, their institutions, to their colleges and universities uh, and, you know, sort of better connect with, with them? Fantastic question. And, and mm -hmm. I think um, as somebody who has been on both sides, right? Somebody who has been a prospective student for high school, undergraduate and graduate studies, and somebody who has been on the inside, who has been the admissions uh, dis director, a dis decision maker for these yeah. students. I I'm glad to share the, the both sides of the equation. So students make the right uh, plan correctly and make the right strategies when they're contacting representatives, right? So mm -hmm. I understand many students, they're very eager to, uh, to have an answer, right? Mm -hmm. And even maybe not, a, you know, maybe not even having an answer. They may be probably eager to hear back, to know that there's somebody on the other end is eager yeah. to hear their, them um, uh, asking a question, right? They want to hear some response back, some human back mm. on the other end in Canada saying, yes, yes, everything is fine. We're waiting for you, right? So yeah, I understand yeah. that perspective, some, exactly. some, some desire for immediate feedback. I mean, we live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where you go online and you get likes and you comment and you see instantaneous feedback on what mm -hmm. you do. So there is this expectations from the students that the schools will be so responsive. <laughs> in the second you send them a message, they will respond right away. So I get that. Yeah. So let me share the perspective from the school and how to correctly approach the, that relationship. 
uh, schools are overwhelmed. In many cases, when I worked at Schulich, I would look after thousands and thousands of applicants, right? Mm. From all over the world, all different time zones. And, uh, and, and in addition to responding to questions from students, you also need to make sure that the students who qualify need to get the right documentation to apply for the visa, for scholarship and so on. So mm -hmm. the time is, is limited, right? And to be honest, in my experience on the other end, uh, on, on the institutional side, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. And, and I would say the ugly part, when students are disrespectful, they're just writing emails, one after another after another to everyone in the school, this is actually jeopardizing their chances of being admitted or mm. being even enrolled into the program because every school looks at the student from a liabilities perspective. I mean, what's the purpose of admissions? The purpose mm. of admissions to determine a good fit, right? right? And the way students behave in their communications before they start the program is very likely how they mm. will behave during their studies, right? So right. the job of the, my job in admissions was to make sure that students who, who don't have the right etiquette, right, mm -hmm. the communications etiquette will not come in because what happens, the faculty gets upset. You know, if you're writing thousands and thousands of email with uh, silly questions without doing proper research, mm -hmm. obviously when you go to, to, into a program and you start writing the same emails one after another after another to a professor, the professor will get annoyed. And then the professor will come to my boss and say, Boris, why did you accept it? Uh, the student who, who doesn't even know how to properly build the relationship. So I kind of wanted to talk about this. Yeah. This is very critical. Yeah. yeah. So there is a, uh, so, so being respectful and, uh, uh, and, 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 and building the relationship with institutions over time is critical. So I think mm -hmm. there are th three things that kind of want to highlight as, as part of the relationship building process uh, yeah. with the schools. And, and that applies whether you are a prospective student who didn't apply to the school, yeah. with somebody you've already applied and you've been admitted and you're waiting for, for some documents and some enrollment information, whatnot. And this mm -hmm. also applies if you, you know, start studying in September, right? Or when you start studying, right? When yeah. you start your yeah. program and you're already enrolled and then you're dealing with student services and professors and mm -hmm. career services and so on, right? So it's a journey, right? right. And so, uh, so there, there, there are three things I want to highlight. So mm -hmm. number one, I want to say that you have to do your research. This is very important. Mm -hmm. If the information publicly, don't expect to have an answer. Like, don't expect that somebody will, I mean, you might get an auto response, and that's what schools do to, to really get this information to you. But don't expect to, to, answer, you know, to have a general question answered to you. So do your research before you ask any questions, right? right. Second thing is that you have to prepare your thoughtful questions. So that's the key here. Your questions have to be very well thought through uh, and your intent needs to be clear, right? Mm. That's, that's very, very important. And I, I always have enjoyed, I, I, I mean, I, I, I had a that it has a, has substance to it, right? That, yeah. that really gets me thinking is like, hmm, this student's really did the research and is mm -hmm. asking me a question that is helping me to improve my information on the website. So mm -hmm. let me give you an example. Um, because this is how schools publish frequently asked questions on their website. And, and that's what I you know, kind of wanted to, to highlight. For example, I mean, one really good question is that when you study employment statistics right, mm -hmm. on the website, some schools are better than others to highlight information specifically for international students. Others are not, right? Some right. would publish very really general information. Others will go very specifically saying, this is mm -hmm. the employment rates of international students, right? So yeah. if you do this research, you know, you go through the reports, those reports are available. And then mm -hmm. you will prepare a question to somebody in the career center saying, hi, my name is so-and-so, I did my research. I see a lot of information about overall visa students, how many of them get go here and here and here, this is how much you make. I would mm -hmm. like to find out if you 
have any specific information about international students, right? right. That's a very thoughtful question that you can mm. prepare and, and, uh, and, 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 and demonstrate that you go beneath the surface. Right? The mm. purpose of going and studying uh, in a, in a well-respected institution is you, you develop critical thinking. Right. And critical thinking means you, you do the research, you, I mean, that's, that's where you go to, to educate yourself. You, you go beneath the surface and this information is all available. We just need to learn how to research it. Whether right. you're doing research for a science degree or where you're doing research on your educational journey, that information is available to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And the final thing I would say, um, you have to make uh, the person who you're writing feel um, uh, special. So what mm -hmm. does it mean? You know, everybody these days, uh, or many people, the vast majority are on LinkedIn. So you can find out about who they are, what they care about, what type of articles they write, or they, mm -hmm. you know, what they like. So if you contact someone, make sure you, you, you highlight this information in your communication saying, you know, dear Mr. Bohr, dear Bohr. So we'll talk about uh, netiquette in a second as well. Um, yeah. Well, dear Boris, I've, uh, uh, I've seen your profile on LinkedIn. You have published recently a book and it's became a bestseller. Congratulations. Hmm. Um, the purpose of my email today is ask you so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. so you actually show that you, you did some research about the person you contacted. So if it's a director of admissions or it's a student recruiter, you can mm -hmm. find out who they are and what they care about on social media. And very mm -hmm. importantly, put this in the email. So that, those are the three things, uh, right. three, three, three major strategies and tips. Um, so let me ask you the other thing here or tell you the other thing here yeah. um, about the netiquette, right? So uh, have, let me ask a question to the audience here. So, so how many of you have heard, term, have heard a term called netiquette? So it's like etiquette, but netiquette. So if you, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, you know show thumbs up uh, that, that you have heard of word netiquette. Okay, some likes are coming. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see how they come over time. So let's, let's talk about the netiquette. So mm -hmm. netiquette is how you communicate with people online. So this is very relevant to how you communicate with admission staff, right? This yeah. is really relevant how you communicate with, um, uh, with, uh, with professors. Both of them apply, okay? Right. So some particular tips for students from India, right? And mm. I've worked with <laughs> students from India. I understand culturally there is a lot of reference to sir or madam. That's very culturally appropriate. In North America, you don't do that. So when you write your email, you can address whether it's whoever you're talking to by their first name. So in my case, if you're writing an email to me as, as, a, as an author or as a university staff, you need to write, Dear Boris. That's completely acceptable. You don't need to add sir or madam to this. That's not necessary. So dear so-and-so, right? That's one thing. Second thing, if you're asking a question or you know, commenting on something that is on your application, you have to include your ID. You have to include your student number because otherwise schools, I mean, they might have students with the same name many, many times, and there is no way for them to verify who you are unless you provide that information, that ID information specific to the institution. The best place to do it is either in the subject line or in the, or under your name, under your, when you sign your, your email. Hmm. Okay. Third thing, never send an email, never start a new email if you are responding to the existing question or you are <laughs> responding to the email chain. If it's an email cha chain, keep it the chain of that communication going. So the person who is responding, you know, can refer to earlier messages for his or her memory. Okay, that's mm -hmm. very important. Uh, another tip I would suggest to the students. So I talked about how to address someone. I talked about including your ID, uh, uh, about you know, doing your research, research. Um, m making them feel um, uh, special. Right? Yeah. That's very important that you did your research about that person mm -hmm. who you asking the question. 
Um, what I wanted to say is like, you need to start and finish the email with proper introduction and proper conclusion. Mm -hmm. So for example, dear, you know, dear Boris, um, we have, uh, I've been part of your Instagram live when you've been talking about uh, tips and strategies for building relationship with institution. So now you specify how we met. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we've never met and you, uh, you know, learned about me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Totally mm -hmm. fine. Then you specify your question. What's your inquiry? And keep it concise. You don't need to write an essay. No. Mm -hmm. Make it very short, very specific, very clear. Make sure you sign your email by you know, saying regards so-and-so. Regards and that. So keep it, keep it professional and keep it structured. It's very, very important. And school representatives, whether it's a recruiter or professor, gets really, really annoyed uh, when you when you're writing, when your communication style is very much like you're writing on Instagram, because that's yeah. not how it works. Right. Your email is a professional way of communication, and in many cases, your employment, your future employment, will be determined by the by by the hiring manager on mm -hmm. how professionally you communicate. It takes time to develop, but the best time to start developing the skill is right now, no. and you learning from me right now. So when you communicate with your institutions, make sure you do it in the right way. Great, no, that's that's fascinating because I think, uh, uh, you know, the, you, there are a couple of things that you touched upon which are so relevant for Indian students and coming from the Indian education system uh, myself, uh, the whole thing about, you know, your misters and ma'ams and sirs uh, is, you know, like uh, at this, uh, I, I would say in one way we are moving towards a more sort of approachable way of communicating, uh, but also, yes, a, a formalized way in which you're basically having to put your best foot forward and make the right sort of impression. Uh, uh, to the institution so that, of course, yes, they will hopefully uh, see that you stand out amongst uh, uh, a number of students or a, a long list of emails that they have to go through, but also for, as you said, uh, future prospects. So really, really great insight. Yeah, sorry, you were going to say something. One thing, actually, and I know there are questions coming. Keep on writing your questions. We'll get to yeah. them uh, <laughs> in a little bit. I kind of wanted to highlight this because that's, that's what I'm talking about. What we're talking about right now is a foundation for your success in Canada, right? If you don't get this, um, if you don't start working on improving your communication and relationship building skills now, you will be into a huge disadvantage. So it doesn't matter whether you are in Canada or not. If you're not, if you're not setting yourself up for success with the way you communicate and build relationship, there's no point of coming to Canada. I would say like there's, that you need to have the right mindset here. Uh, what I wanted to say here is that uh, universities use, st starting to use very sophisticated system to track correspondence, to track right. email. Right. And I know students uh, have this habit mm -hmm. of sending the same question to many people in the school, right? Yeah. <laughs> they would try to send one email to Boris and one to Boris's colleague and one to Boris's boss and one to Boris's, I don't know, professor and so on. Yeah. Do not do this. Because mm -hmm. schools know, and they will see if you use the same email asking the same question, that this, you know, that you're shopping around. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you know, it, it, it's, it upsets people that you're not uh, concise. And here's the thing. The best thing to do here is to write one email asking your question and mm -hmm. follow up. So that's mm -hmm. what's really important. So send an email. If you haven't heard back, maybe in you know, two to three days, I would say give it three days. Okay. If you haven't yeah. heard back in three days mm -hmm. and your question is very well thought through and you did your research, make you know follow up in three days and make sure you're consistent in following up because mm -hmm. I, I, I had really great, I mean, listen, inboxes get really full and you know you don't get the chance to get through all of it and you, my email might have been missed. So don't take it personally, but the mm -hmm. best thing is to follow up and follow through and that right. those are students who do that, they always get their answered questions, uh, no matter how easy or difficult the question is. Great. <laughs> we have someone saying, what if you don't get any reply in a week? Then I guess send another reminder. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Now, never mind. And, and you yeah. know, listen, it, it, it very much depends what type of questions you have. Like, you mm -hmm. might be asking, so, you know, I, let, let's address the other question about Corona, right? And about, yeah. uh, about um, closed borders and visa applications. So, uh -huh. institution, I mean, if you think about it, this is not necessarily uh, within the specific schools or specific de department decision right there is mm -hmm. many many layers above it i mean it goes all the way to the prime minister right so the decision yeah. to reopen the borders to manage this all really goes all the way up to the to the top because yeah. most of the schools in canada are public institutions so they're not i mean the, 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 if it was a private school that might be a bit different you know, like i mean some of the decisions can be at the specific school administration level but in most of the cases it goes all the way up to to the command uh, of the prime minister who decides when the borders are going to be safe to reopen and so on right so right. if your question is regarding you know when will the borders be reopened well you should be monitoring the news and this information will come in the news and probably you may be the, the earlier to find out about this than mm -hmm. the institution themselves right so right. Uh, I think at this present time, being, uh, you know, being empathetic, mm -hmm. the quality of empathy is very important. We all right. in this together. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I understand students are anxious and eager to get on the plane, come to Canada and hit the ground running and you know, yeah. start learning and, and, yeah. and you know, start uh, working part time. I understand. I, I mm -hmm. completely understand. But let's let's put things into perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes, time is precious, and I'm sure you've been planning to come to Canada for months, maybe years. But situation has changed, right? And so you need to adapt. Well, yeah. One of the most important characteristics that successful international students have is the ability to adapt to the new mm -hmm. environment. You will come to Canada; it will be very different from India or any other country you are in right now. And you mm -hmm. will need to adapt. So your challenge of adapting to the new setting has started right now. So, mm -hmm. and I know many schools have reached out to you and offered you to uh, to start your program online, right? And yeah. this is something that you will need to decide whether it's the right decision for you or not. It, mm -hmm. it may or may not be, right? Uh, Canadian government said that if you start uh, learning online uh, and uh, it will not uh, affect your postgraduate work permit, which is great news, right? So, yeah. so, so you, you, I mean, education, is, education have never been limited to particular borders. Yeah. I mean, you can, I know some of the best educated people who never travel outside of their country. So you don't mm -hmm. need to be in Canada to be learning, right? You can read books, you can do online courses, you can do e micro credentials. Because mm -hmm. the sooner you start setting yourself up for success, and you don't need to be physically ca in Canada, when you come here, and I'm sure things will change sooner or later, when you come here, yeah. you're fully prepared to hit the ground running and be successful uh, to achieving whatever your dreams you, know, you have. Yeah, great, great. I mean, I agree. And, and the time is now to sort of keep yourself engaged. Uh, sort of uh, make use of as many resources as you can so that you are better prepared for your life as an international student. Uh, great. So, uh, yeah, so we've touched upon what, uh, you know, prospective students can do uh, to reach out to institutions. But what about other stakeholders, you know, who can provide them support like agents? And guys, keep on bringing your questions. We'll get to them. You know, we, Anam and I, we have a small plan for, for <laughs> yeah. the, the most important things. And I know as you listen to me and Anam speak, you have new ideas coming. So keep your questions coming in. We'll, we'll get to uh, some of them, all of them. We have half an hour, so don't worry. We'll, we'll stay engaged. Ask your questions, we'll get to them. So, so we spoke about one of the stakeholders, right, mm -hmm. being, uh, being the institutions themselves, right? So yeah. you asked uh, the school um questions right so the other stakeholders would be current students mm -hmm. right and alumni that would right. be another stakeholder that i kind of wanted to, to touch on yes. so they are available to you in abundance mm -hmm. you can reach these days you can find them let's use let's talk about linkedin linkedin is my preferred platform of uh, 
choice because mm-hmm. uh, uh, it forces you to uh, build your personal brand and present yourself professionally. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that kind of, depending how well you present yourself on LinkedIn, your chances of being connected with someone all the way up to a prime minister of Canada is, mm-hmm. is reflective of how well you present yourself. So you know, we'll talk yeah. about this. Yeah. So current students and past students, alumni mm-hmm. are critical. Mm-hmm. Yes. I encourage you to start building your relationships with these stakeholders, current students yes. in your institutions, as well as an alumni today. Mm-hmm. The reason being, they are great resource, they're a great way to build your network. And so mm-hmm. let me talk about the network for a second. Your network, your wealth is your, you know, your, your network, your, your net worth and your, your network is your yeah. network. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. <laughs> and so the biggest disadvantage that many international have, international students have, is the fact that they have, they lack the network mm-hmm. and the networking skills to be successful. 80% mm-hmm. of jobs never get posted online because those mm-hmm. jobs get, um, you know, those jobs are, are secured by someone through networking. Yeah. And, uh, the, the statistics are quite, is quite alarming. The fact that international students get $10,000 less in salary than Canadian mm-hmm. students after graduating mm-hmm. is the reflection of their, uh, the, the reflection of their networking skills, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so you know, the purpose of our live session right now is to teach you how to build your network and networking skills so you're successful yes. when you come to Canada. I mean, mm-hmm. time flies really quick, right? And so the sooner you start building your network, the sooner you start building your network, one dollar at a time. Mm-hmm. So if you, let's say, going to the University of British Columbia, for example, mm-hmm. you can easily find anyone who have studied at the University of British Columbia who is also from India, who is working in consulting that, you know, an area may interest you. So yes. go ahead and reach out and build that relationship with them. So what does mm-hmm. it mean? It means you're sending a, 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 a personal note with mm-hmm. every LinkedIn request. So you're saying, for example, dear Boris, we, you know, I spoke with you, I met you through on, on live session, on Instagram live session today. Mm-hmm. Your story is very interesting. Would you like to be connected? You know, can we stay connected? And here is the thing. I would gladly accept your invite if you write it in that manner because it shows yeah. that you, you have good intentions. And these days you can connect with future employers who are likely to be graduates from the schools you're going to. So mm-hmm. invest your time right now while you're back home to build your personal brand on LinkedIn and start building your network today through LinkedIn with the schools, with people you have already been in touch, like Anam or myself, mm-hmm. with people who you, who, who have the type of profile that you interest, because that's ultimately which will really help you transition and land your job once you're in Canada. Great. Uh, and we are already getting a couple of questions. We will take these a little later, uh, you know, once we are done. So, uh, Boris, is there, um, are, are there any more tips on communicating better that you can sort of, convey to our uh, our viewers or uh, I know you have a very interesting practice exercise for all of us so uh, or would you you know would you like to jump to that yes let me touch on the on the on the exercise here and I can't wait to answer your question so bring on keep on keep on bringing this question mm-hmm. I will I will we'll get to as many of them as we can mm-hmm. um, so I think um, what I think one one challenge I would like to put out to you today right? And this is really tied to my previous point is start building your network in Canada today, right? right? And I challenge you to five, five people who are in Canada or who studied in Canada and who are in India maybe right now, but five people who have connection to Canada, right? Today on LinkedIn and Mm -hmm. add them as your connection. Because if you're connecting with five people on a daily basis between now and the time you come to Canada and you get in that habit of building your network, you will be to such a huge advantage in the future, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to start looking for jobs, I've Mm -hmm. seen people posting their, you know, their, their video and saying, hi, 
my name is in so-and-so, I'm a marketer, mm -hmm. I like this so-and-so, are there any job opportunities? And there are mm -hmm. ways to do about it. So, so my challenge to you, my exercise to you is go to LinkedIn. If you don't have a profile, create a profile, shouldn't take you too long. You can add myself and Anam as your two connections with, you know, with, you know, with connections to Canada. So that, yeah. that would be your <laughs> challenge. Yeah. And do connect with five people on a daily basis as you build, start building your network, because this will, this will set you up for success in the future, because that's, that's what will really give you credibility, give you references, give you job opportunities. So that's kind of what I wanted to challenge everyone here. Awesome. And yes, so Priyansh, that answers your question. You can definitely add us to your LinkedIn network and get started today. It's just five names, do a bit of research and you know, you, you may have something new to learn from them now or uh, for, for the future. So that, that's been real fun, Boris. Um, anything, so uh, I do want to sort of uh, touch, go back to uh, your book and you know, talk about how students can actually learn from there because uh, you know, my copy of the book is on its way and I can't wait to you know, dig into it and uh you know uh you know learn from your advice so uh any anything that you you'd want to share with our viewers about you know how they can you know get their hands on this yeah, i'll talk about this for a for, for a moment so this mm -hmm. is the book it's uh, it has 150 pages of content uh this book became number one amazon bestseller in college guides financial aid questions and answers for Amazing. educations. It's a, it's, yeah. I'm very proud of this and I'm really glad that, that I, 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 I feel that it's my responsibility to share my knowledge like I'm doing mm -hmm. it today. And right. I'm really happy to see many students around the world benefiting from this knowledge. So mm -hmm. uh, I actually have a, a dedicated chapter. So we talked about relationship building, right? With mm -hmm. different stakeholders. So I have a dedicated chapter number four, which is called how and where to get answers to your questions. So it's, it's right here, and right? this is a right. full chapter for you where you can go study uh, and, and, and get the best knowledge. The book is available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You can go download an ebook today or get your paperback version, or you can go to startrightbook.com, which I guess I'll post here. This is the website for the, for the book where you can download ebook, but the website also comes with two really valuable bonuses. So the mm -hmm. first bonus is that I build a portal Mm -hmm. It's a very special portal for international students, which has all the resources that I've used during my time in Canada that helped me mm -hmm. so much uh, in, in you know, getting to where I am at life. So right. I have resources on immigration to Canada, resources on opening back, bank accounts for international students with bonuses, the mm -hmm. best credit cards. Uh, I have different exercises and worksheets and budgets uh, in the portal. So you wow. get access to this portal as well as few trainings that I did, recording trainings in the portal. And it uh -huh. comes with the book. So that's that's benefit num that's a bonus number one. Mm -hmm. And the bonus number two is that I have a private community, both on LinkedIn and Facebook, where students right. get a chance and, and my followers get a chance to engage mm -hmm. with me, with my and with the rest of the community. So this access to a private community comes with a book, and the book is four dollars and seventy-five cents. So you know, a cup of a, a cup of cappuccino or latte, <laughs> and you get 16 years of my wisdom, all all in this book that I, I can think I, I'm very I'm convinced will help you to get into your dream school, get a job, and immigrate to Canada. That sounds amazing, Boris. And I think your portal is also uh, going to be a great resource for our viewers and students like them uh, to. Uh, and you know get their questions basically answered uh, by you so that sounds really fascinating uh, yeah you were going to say something and one one last thing here yeah of course the one the one one other thing i'm launching a challenge i love challenges so go <laughs> on startrightbook.com put your email because uh -huh. you will be invited to a i start right challenge which is coming in the, in a couple of days and okay. you will be amazed. I basically, I love challenges myself and I love mm -hmm. challenging others to do something. So my challenge will be focused around making you successful as a uh, studying for studying, living and working in Canada. So 
go put your email in there and you'll find out very, very soon. Whether you get a book or not, that's your choice, but the challenge will be really exciting. So I can't wait to see you on the inside. <laughs> great. That's a great call to action for all yeah. of you. And uh, please make uh, the most of the advice that Boris has uh, shared with you. Uh, you know, uh, check out the portal, check out the challenge and see where this gets you. Um, Boris, is, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to share with everyone? Should we have a look at a couple of questions? Uh, before we Now it's up? the best part. We have 20 yeah. minutes or so. And I'll read out the question um, and I'll, I'll take it. So someone has asked, what is the first step for making or you know making a network so step number one in my what would be step business, number one yeah step number one would be use linkedin so create a linkedin profile mm. upload a professional picture write you know include your academic and and work credentials in in your linkedin profile and add uh, me and anam as your first connections if you if you don't have one um, yeah. so that would be step number one Mm -hmm. Step number two, and depending where you are in your, in your journey, mm -hmm. I suggest you to start an Excel file where mm -hmm. you start inputting your connections when it comes down to some specific actions. So mm -hmm. for example, you know, you could put, uh, I don't know, could, could put, could put a recruiter, put, put a university recruiter you've been in touch with and you send mm -hmm. an email and you've been waiting for a week and the person hasn't gone back and you know it's been bothering you it's been your head for so long when you write things down and i have journals i love journaling so i have one journal here where i write yeah. a lot of my thoughts and ideas i actually have you know a few journals mm -hmm. but when i write things down in my head that i need to oh i really need to email anam i really need to email anam if, if i'm keeping yeah. it in my head it keeps me you know it bothers me but if mm -hmm. I write it down, it's it's off my head and I know I will get back to that I need right. to get something to enough, right? And so yeah, yeah. same thing when, when you are reaching out to professors, faculty, representative from the schools, you're expecting an answer and you will not get it for three days and it's consuming your... Ideally, put it in Excel as an action item, you know, first mm -hmm. name, last name, position, email, and an action item and go back to this in a specific time would really be great. You know, it would be a great way to, to, re, to, to get things of your head so you can focus on something that is really meaningful to you. Great, great. So first steps to building your network, get onto LinkedIn, add people you know, and have a task sheet for yourself that you can, you know, consult on a daily basis and, you know, strike out items that you're getting done so that, you know, you are more productive with your daily life. Great uh, advice, Boris. Thank you. So we have another qu question from Priyansh, actually. And uh, so he's asking us, uh, you, how he can maintain a healthy relationship with the professor? Uh, well, I guess it's, you know, let's talk about healthy relationships <laughs> yeah. overall, because the healthy relationship yeah. applies not only to professor, but it's a healthy relationship that you need to maintain with yourself. That's right. right. I think, I think, you know, talking about mental health, right. Mm -hmm. You probably your biggest, well, I'm, I'm probably my biggest critic. I'm, yeah. I think that well, we are our own biggest critic, probably more than any professor. Mm -hmm. So think about, well, how do you maintain a healthy relationship with yourself, with right. your you know, close ones, your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, children, mm -hmm. your parents, right? I think parents is also an important stakeholder because you need to maintain that relationship, that boundary. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think, you know, my, my take on healthy relationship with anyone, parents or, or wife or, um, or professor, right? There needs to be boundaries. Right? right you need to protect yourself and mm. they need to protect yourself themselves right that's what right. is called basically a healthy relationship when mm -hmm. everybody has their own space and they're comfortable in their own space and so right. i think um one thing i would say is that build a relationship because healthy really you know healthy boundary means healthy relationship when you have a rapport, a rapport between two people. I have mm -hmm. two chapters dedicated in a book about building rapport with Canadians and the professors. That's even different about asking questions. 
Yeah. And, and one of the things I would, it's really focused around boundaries. So know what you're comfortable with and know mm. what the other person is comfortable with and respecting that will, you know, will make you successful. Great, great. I think, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I think for Indian students, especially, I mean, uh, it, it, it is a big uh, learning and uh, definitely yeah. uh, you need some sort of introspection to be able to sort of respond to others better as well. So thanks for that, Boris. Uh, we have another question from Sumit, uh, who has asked you, you know, from international students' perspective, how can they find out which source of information is legitimate or not? Since the internet is so full of information, may, which may or may not be correct. So great question, Sumit. Uh, Boris, uh, what do you say? Oh, that's great. I think this comes down to be to doing a purposeful research, right? And asking mm -hmm. tough questions. So the best yeah. thing to find out whether somebody knows his or her own, you know, own stuff or you know, to really know whether the person is a, is a professional or is an expert, you mm -hmm. really need to ask tough questions. Like, yeah. like, you know, I would say, for example, so when I, uh, one of my favorite questions when I go through an interview process, whether to mm -hmm. get into school or, or get a job, I would say, if I were to be offered that job, or mm -hmm. that uh, offer of admissions to the school. Why mm -hmm. should I not take it? Why should I not take it? I mean, it's a really tough question. It gets you mm -hmm. thinking it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> if I were to admit that student or if I were to take this person for a job, why yeah. should I not do it? This is a yeah. very, very tough question. It's beneath the you know, things you can find online. And so mm -hmm. the best way to find out whether somebody is really an expert or just somebody who is uh, bullshitting and making things up is to ask really, really tough questions to see whether you know the person is an expert or not. I mean, the, right. th these days it's easy to create this ambiance that you're an expert, but mm -hmm. only through asking uh, questions and doing your research, you will be able to know whether the person is legitimate and what yeah. are the intentions. I mean, there is a yeah. lot of fraud in international education. I'm deeply concerned mm -hmm. about this, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it, it's, it's, how would I say? I would say it's a, uh, I don't want to say it's a fault of students, but to some extent, it's 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 ignorance. If you don't right. ask, if you don't do your research, and if you don't yeah. ask the questions, and you do, and yeah, you right. believe someone who wants to take your money, I mean, there are bad people. There are always been bad people, whether they're in education in Canada, in America, doesn't matter. They or there are bad people with bad intentions all the time. But it's your responsibility to do your research, to ask your questions. And the third thing is listen to your intuition. So mm -hmm. that's very, very important. That's why, that's why I like, I love meditating and you know, I would go into a very calm state of mind where I, where I would connect to my, you know, my, my infinite intelligence, my, my deeper you know, soul. And my soul will tell me whether the person I'm speaking with and the way person is responding to my question is really genuine or the person is trying to take advantage of me. So that's my advice. Great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for, uh, of course, uh, you know, it's so important to get the right sort of credible uh, information out there. And that's actually the reason that we are having such interactions on, say, webinars or, you know, Facebook, Instagram lives with, you know, experts like you, Boris, because we want, uh, you know, our viewers and followers to sort of get uh, the right sort of, uh, you know, relevant information uh, from people who've actually experienced it or are in this sort of education sector and can give the right sort of guidance uh, to all of you. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, do keep following us on Maple Assist and, uh, you know, and for such uh, sessions, Boris, thank you so much. Uh, this has been such a pleasure. It's always uh, great speaking to you and hearing uh, what you have to say. And, uh, you know, you've given us a, a lot to think about and a lot to do, uh, you know, a certain tasks for our viewers to sort of, you know, uh, get into action immediately. And uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Thank you. It's my, my pleasure. So I can't wait to hop online and to see who is who are my new connections <laughs> right. uh, and, and how I can you know add value. Uh, right. I, I think that's that's kind of the, the reason I wanted to uh, you know, invest my time and my thinking in writing this book, right? All yeah. uh, the reason I know the reason. 
the information that came into this book is based on the most frequently asked questions from students. So the questions you're asking Amazing. about yeah. visa and about guidance, it's all in here, right? And there is a saying in, 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 in English is like, if I had more time, I would write you a shorter email, you know, because right. writing concise information takes a lot of you know, mm. thinking and reflection. Yeah. And yeah, I could have uh, written a book that is, you know, a thousand pages long, right? I can, yeah. I could yeah. write, but you don't have the time. I mean, yes. You guys want instantaneous response. Yeah. And so, so many of the wisdom I have, I, I put it in the book and you can get it with the portal and the community. So, so you, you know, we can stay in touch and I can, can learn from you and even do some of better research to get the right, the, the right information in your hands. Yeah, great, great. So we'll we'll continue building relationships and our, our networks with with all of you. And thank you so much uh, to all our viewers. Thank you for being here, spending your Friday evening with us. Uh, please, uh, we will be actually asking for your feedback after the live. Do share your comments with us. If you have any more questions for Boris, please send them in. We'd like to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're happy and you, as I have seen, we would love to have Boris uh, share his thoughts with you again in the future. Uh, so keep following us on Maple Assist. See our latest updates. And uh, thank you all once again. Thank you, Boris. And enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thanks. Bye -bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.